Hey everybody, it's Tony Wyatt from Wyatt and Dad Cobbler Company. Today I think we've got something a little bit unique for you. We've done things where we've converted Iron Rangers into loggers. We've converted Iron Rangers into a leather half or a leather full sole with a rubber half sole over the top. This particular job, we're gonna do a combination on this brand new pair of 8085s. The customer wants us to take these, oh man, look at that, isn't that a gorgeous boot? He wants us to take these and do a half sole with the V100 sole. So I've got to figure out how to make that blend in and do right. Stick around and let's see how it works out. Or as Collar Tobias says, stick along. All right, so one of the first things I do when I'm taking a boot apart is I take the heel pads out so that I don't forget about them being in the boot and later go to nailing something in and put holes in the heel pads. These are the heel pads right here. You can see it's a little layer of leather. It's made to go and pad the heel from the nails that hold the boot together. As you may have seen in some of our other videos, for those that follow along a lot, this is a heel lift. It's a special tool designed with a little bit of a curve on it. So you start out by sliding under this way, and then when you need more pry, you turn it over. And it gives you more leverage to make getting these stubborn cinched nails out easier. Not that they're ever easy. And then when you get past that point, grab it with the nippers and start rolling them out. So in some videos you see where we take and put the knife in between the welt and the sole and we start cutting and we cut all the way around. This is a brand new boot. And so it's going to be very, very well glued to the welt. And I don't want to take a chance of sanding against the, um, or cutting against the upper on the inside of the, um, in between the sole and the welt. So instead, we're going to do these a little bit different. All right, as you can see, I sanded off just the tops of the stitches. I didn't have to sand away a lot of the rubber or anything like that. And that gives me plenty of meat to grab a hold, break this loose. Since we're converting these boots into a completely different style boot, we're not going to reuse the original heel seats because I want to give a little bit wider platform around here for the new style that we're doing. So these are going to be going away. Now, as you've seen in videos past, we grab the well and pull it and pull it off but when you've got all these little nubbies sticking down it can get entangled into the stitching from this stuff so you're better off to pull this out first and get it out of your way And you get the first couple stitches broken loose from each other, especially on a new boot. 
because they are still very glued together. They've not been exposed to any weather or anything like that. So they're a little more difficult. But once you get it going, One thing new that Red Wing has been doing, you heard that cracking sound. So Red Wing has been using a lot of hot glue right here to hold the shank in. They used to glue them in, but they've changed their method to hot glue. And so I've even had customers who have brand new boots who have come in and the, when they took a step, they've had that clacking going on. So we've had to take the boot apart and just to be able to get to this and clean this out to be able to glue that back down so it's kind of a shame because you got to get a whole new resole at that point so i'm not crazy about their new hot glue method now they're still using the good cork and it's hot cork put in and it's only difficult to come out because it's brand new had people argue with me about this and say no it can't be the cork will form over it and it won't matter but I've also resold a lot of shoes where someone got them done somewhere else and they didn't do this you can't leave any of this cork in here and put new cork over it it doesn't just form over it it'll actually end up later making this get hard and it'll push in so this area right here and under the heel it's very very important that you get all of this out. so i try to scrape the majority of it out with my heel lift and then i will hit it on the sandpaper and smooth it out before i go to put new cork in plus i've got to get this hot glue out of there so i've got to put it in the heat box to do that the stitching comes out pretty easy There's that now I gotta heat it and then I'll scrape it some more and then if I have to I'll sand it. Now even though this looks pretty smooth, it's not smooth enough, it's definitely gonna have to hit some sandpaper. Alright, so we want our welts to be the fit into the boot the way it should. So right here you can see where the last stitch from the original welt went. You want to lay this just past that. See how that drops right into that cradle real well? And then see, we're going to bevel this and our heel seat will sit right over the top. But I take and measure this right around like this. Not real tight. I'm not pulling snug. That's the big key or otherwise you can end up cutting your welt short. And so I'm measuring that to right here and I'm going to put my thumb and so I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to bevel both edges as I clean this off and get it ready for dyeing. Okay, so this is a thick blunt end and we've got to put the heel seat over the top of this. And so we want a nice bevel for everything to blend together and look like one thickness when we're done and not look like a transition. So I'm going to sand this down to a point right here. And I'm going to clean off all this coloring on here because we're going to dye these chocolate. The customer wanted chocolate welts. So I'm going to bevel both ends.
notice I'm twisting the needle. It helps me feel what's going on so I can not just jab through by blunt force, but to finesse my way through the materials and back out so I don't get a hard snatch. If you pull too hard and snatch, this little barb right here on the needle will cut your thread in half. Notice I leave about six or eight inches out of that loop instead of doing it real tight. That way when I come through, I've got some give. Give me time to get my arm to slow down on the other side. Again, another reason for doing that is to keep me from cutting my thread in two. Now you see I'm pulling this stitch on this side tight. I've got my thread here and then I pull everything right in here into the middle and then I pull it tight. And as I've mentioned before in my other videos you can see that wedge off right there. So I'm coming through my line cut here and coming out right in here instead of out here. I want to be in this area. Now we get a lot of questions about welts because we do so many new welts. Why do you have to do new welts every time you resole? You do not. That is your answer and that's what answer I tell you when you send your boots in. In this particular case, this was a brand new boot with brand new welts. Should be able to be resold six, seven times. No need for new welts. However, this customer wanted a completely different look. So if I don't recommend welts for a structural reason, and I do recommend them when it's structural, but if I don't recommend them for a structural reason, I only inform the customer of the reasons that others do new welts and let that customer decide whether they want to get new welts or not. Like I said before, in this case, the customer wanted to go with the chocolate brown welt for a different look on the boot. So the only way to accomplish that without getting dye on the boot is to take the welts off. Since I got to take them off and hand sew them back on, you may as well get brand new ones. So customization is one reason, and then the other reason I will show you when we go to stitch. Put my last stitch through, give myself a little bit bigger loop through. And on this side I give a bigger loop as well. Pull it back through. And I reach inside of here and grab that loop. And then I pull the thread through like that. To make one loop Pull tight, and then I do a one, two loops, pull tight. All right, so now we are ready to put the shank back in, put some cork on it, and make the heel seats. All right, so right through here, you'll notice how the boot is turned up because I had to turn everything up while I was sewing it. So to get everything to lay back down just right, we take the hammer and beat all this down. So you'll see me doing that. See, now we have all rolled edges. So when the welt's pulled back up, everything will be rolled and nice and smooth in the transition instead of having a lump there that it's got to work its way over.
As I've mentioned in other videos, we use the heavy D cork. The heavy D cork is a little bigger than most other cork taps and it's this thickness which that thickness works perfect for the gimming so I never have to do a double up or two layers of cork and try to balance it all out. I always get a good even balance with the heavy D. So this is a sheet of our uh, German leather, known as Black Forest, on our website. It is um, tanned from the oak trees in the Black Forest. Same place that JR is tanned. And same trees, same bark. So I'm making new hill rands. I want them to be a little bigger, so I'm tracing them outside of the uh, old hill rands. And now I've got to cut these up. Now I've got to bevel this edge to match the edge on my welts so that we get a nice smooth transition. Now most of the time for attaching a heel ran like this you can get away with a two and a half ounce lasting tack because we're just tacking it in place. Everything will be nailed in place later. All right, over here I got my bevel looking good. So we're ready to just trim this up and then put the soles on. We don't want it too big, but we do want it to be a little bit bigger for the new shape. Alright, so now we want to dye the tops of the heel rands so that they match the welt. I'm just going to go ahead on in plenty deep. Nobody will ever see it if I don't miss it or if I do too much, but they will see it if I don't do enough. Once that dries, I'll put some polish on it and she'll be ready to go.
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is mark where I'm going to put my heel. Now I'm going to nail this down with 5 8 oval headed nails. So I'm going to nail the heel seat area down with 5 8 oval headed nails. I'm using iron instead of brass because these boots come with heel pads and the heel pads will cover the iron so we don't have to worry about it being in contact with the foot and perspiration and things like that. Now it's time to design our half sole and what we are going to do here. So as you can see, I picked a sole that's shorter than the boot because we're cutting it off, but I wanted to have a good tread to get far enough back for the footprint, but be short enough that we could maybe save the uh, Vibram logo in the pattern. I'm a little nervous about this size. It's cutting short on the ball of the foot area, so I'm going to go up a little bit bigger. Okay, so I like this pattern. And it's going to give me a good distance from the heel seat to the Vibram logo. But yet the tread pattern right here comes back behind the ball of the foot real well. So it's going to be anywhere he would be standing. He'll have a good platform on. So we're going to go with this size 11 here. Alright, so I'm cutting it off straight for now. And I'm going to see how it fits again. I think I'm going to like the way that looks. Now I'm going to try to bring it at an angle on each side. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty cool. So now I'm going to freshen this up with some sandpaper and then make my marks. Okay, so I want to get my tread pattern centered up around the edge of the sole so I feel with my finger. I want to try to get this Vibram logo right in the center here. Now that I've got it in place, I use my scratch all, trace my pattern. And I'm going to carve in this pattern. So I got my design whittled in. Now I gotta rough this up so I can get a good bond before I stitch the sole. All right, so this is the sole side and then this would typically be the welt side if it was on a shoe. So I'm gonna show you why we tell people that they may or may not want to use the original welt because when we're sewing this would be the welt side the welt side goes upside down in this machine as the machine rolls through this all comes up pokes a hole in the welt and in the um, leather sole it advances forward and the needle follows it down into the hole to pick up the thread and bring it back up through. When it does that, that's what makes the stitch. Then it goes, the all advances forward and does it again. As you can see, we cannot see where the original holes were in the original welt. We're just guessing and we set our settings the best we can, but we have no control over being able to hit every hole and know that we are hitting them because we're watching this side. We can't look upside down while we're sewing. And so a lot of people choose to get new welts even if they're not changing colors or styles because they say, yeah, my OCD kicks in and if you didn't have all the holes hit just perfect, it would drive me crazy. So. I'd rather pay the money to get new welts. 
So that is the second reason why a lot of people get new welts on the jobs that we're doing for them. Whenever I do a pattern like this, I like to put tape. cut it off and when I do my cement I can apply it to this area very generously and then clean it back out to make sure I get that those funny shapes covered real well and I pull my tape off and my leather is nice and clean so I was so focused on this new design and everything I about forgot, about forgot to put the heel base on let me go ahead and do that too while I'm doing a little cement in there. Kill two birds with one stone instead of having to do that later and wait on it. And we've got our blend. Now I gotta welt press it down and get it stuck in real good. But we got it. Okay, so I'm picking this hill size right here. When I line it up with the breast right there, you'll notice that it doesn't match up with the hill seat back or the end of the hill base back here. That's because we're gonna do the logger scoop. And so I want some excess to bring it off and not take away from the rubber as I'm taking the heel base to get that curve in it. So as you can see, the heel base and the heel are not balanced out right. There's no, it, an, an Iron Ranger is not supposed to slant downhill that bad. Plus we've got this big gap back here. So the first thing I got to do is take away the cup in this heel so that it'll sit f flat with the base. And then once I do, I'm gonna work on balancing the base and the heel together so that the boot sits like it should when all is said and done. So when one bends like this, you don't pick it up and straighten it out and drive it on in like a carpenter does. You have to pull it all the way out. You can use the same hole, get further in, but it requires a new nail every time. Alright, so we've got the sole stuck, we got the heels on. Now, as I've told you before in other videos, that this type of glue and this type of rubber needs to sit overnight before you do any cutting or sanding on it so that the 
green time can go out of the glue. So see you tomorrow. All right, so we're back. We've got the soles, they sat overnight and the glue is good and bonded up. So now it's ready to finish these puppies up. We're gonna cut this out, start sanding, put the finishing touches on it. One thing I like to do is this is a Tarago Self Shine. It's not their regular Tarago polish, it's a Self Shine polish. And this is neutral. It comes with a little applicator in the lid. And I like to kind of seal my leather up on the bottom with a little bit of this. You don't want to put it on there and leave it. You want to get your brush and mat it down kind of quick because you're not trying to give the bottom of the sole a shine you just want to protect it so while the edge dressing is drying we're going to go ahead and put the screws in the bottom of the sole don't leave the lid off this long because it's a self shine so it'll evaporate pretty quick Okay, so this is mostly dry, but it's still not completely dry. But um, the customer wanted medium antique edging instead of uh, light antique. So you can see right here where it's drying the most, it's turning orangey. And here it's more of the medium brown. So we wanna make the whole thing look medium instead of that. So what I do is I get, uh, I use Angelus um, dark brown. Uh, paste and work that in. If you have a really light piece of leather that just won't seem to get dark enough, you can actually put a little, after you've got this uh, edge dressing and stuff on there, you can actually use a little black if you have to to get it a little darker. But because this sole is the black forest leather, it's darker than the um, regular veggie tan leather like the heel bases are made out of. So it's automatically gonna come out darker on that layer. So we just gotta kinda get it all to blend together like we want. See how it's darkening that up, getting it all closer to the same color. Now we just give it a little bit of shine. Let it dry for just a few seconds and then hit it, buff it again, and then you'll have a even higher gloss shine. All right, so we, here we have it. An Iron Ranger converted to a half sole lager. 
Now, this customer, I didn't talk about this in the first part of the video, but this customer did request that we um, burn his initials into the waist of the uh, boot. So, um, at Die by Angel came by and burned those in while I had the sole sitting and curing. And she got those done, came out really good. You'll see both of them have it. Looks fantastic. Um, so we've got the lager shaped heel. We've got the lager half sole, the Vibram 100 cut into a half sole. And um, I think it gives a really cool profile. And I really like the way this came out. We went with a uh, chocolate brown welt instead of the normal red wing colored welt um, because the chocolate brown matches the brown stitching in the toe box. And then we use the cream stitching which matches that stitching going around the heel counter and, and holding the vamp together up here in the front and everything. So it kind of unified the whole look of the boot in my opinion. So this is what we did. And um, I think the customer's really gonna like this. Uh, we did the brass screws uh, for decorative purposes. It also helps hold the sole in place a little bit, but it just re looks really cool. So this is the total package. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw. And if you did, Hit subscribe so you don't miss our future videos and you're made aware of that they're coming out and I hope you enjoyed watching.